the new Red Green Show! And now, here's a man who's one part of the North as Tree South and Moose Droppings. Your hero, my uncle, Red Green! Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Well, my wife dragged me out to the Possum Lake Little Theater last night. They were doing Camelot, which is pretty smart of them to do, you know, do a musical, because while you're sitting there thinking they can't sing, you forget they can't act either. <laughs> wow, Camelot, I love that. Camelot, I know I may sound a bit bizarre. <laughs> you don't just sound bizarre, Harold. Right? <laughs> but you know, while I'm sitting there, I'm thinking, you know, in a way, Possum Lodge is kind of our Camelot. And I'm thinking, wouldn't it be great to have a day where we all dress up as Knights of the Round Table and force people to become Christians and stuff like that? Oh, yeah, 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 because, you know, they used to wear armor and stuff like that. They had, like, like chain mail, you know? I got a chain letter once, but that's a lot different. <laughs> Just ignore him. It's not rude. It's saving his life. <laughs> so stay tuned and watch a bunch of middle-aged guys recreate the Middle Ages. If ever I would leave you... Don't tease me, Harold. <laughs> Explain this, we're gonna be here all evening, so the heck with it. But we do have Edgar Montrose trying to hear while I try to listen. And I'm gonna lay a little peace sign on good old Buzz Sherwood. Plus, I'm gonna build that crossbow that'll put hair on your chest. Great news. Old Lady Beckman, who is the principal of the Possum Lake School, has offered us all her old sports equipment. Actually, she's kind of hoping to participate in our medieval day. She wants to play the part of Guinevere. She's a little light in the winter, but she's very heavy on the veer. <laughs> well, Uncle Red, I don't think that, you know, use scholastic sports equipment is like the best idea to, you know, represent the Middle Ages. <laughs> well, you know, unless I'm missing something. <laughs> well, you're gonna be, Harold, all right? <laughs> How about purple horses? Do you think we could use purple horses at all? Purple horses? Purple horses, Harold. School board has purple horses? Yes, sir. Well, that explain the meat in the cafeteria. <laughs> Pummel horses. That says pummel horses, Uncle Ed. Well, yeah, we could use that. What about this with the long pole vault thing in the padding? What's that? Oh, no, parallel bars. Oh, yeah. That's how I sprain my armpits. <laughs> I hate Jim. Well, in keeping with our medieval times theme, Bill, later on the show, is going to have a lesson on fencing. Kind of a delicate French kind of a thing. Almost like a... Oh, very good. Almost like a ballet. Very, very, very dignified. Unfortunately, I'm not from France. Well, here we are with Buzz Sherwood, and uh, we are all set to play the Possum Lodge word game. Is this the part where I get to, like, fill up the shopping cart full of all kinds of stuff? No. <laughs> Today's grand prize, Buzz, is three bottles of Possum Hills drinking water and a pair of running shoes. So, uh, Harold, just give me the word there. Don't look at this now, Buzz. I'll show the folks at home what it says. All right, now, Buzz, you got 30 seconds to say this word. Okay, come on, man. Too many rules. Let's do it. Uh, harmony. Bad music. Uh, tranquility. Oh, uh, uh, hiding place. Wow. No. War and... Commission. Commission. The Warren Commission, man. It was such a crock. <laughs> Oswald had no, couldn't no, been no, alone. No, the grassy no, knoll, no, the second no, no, gun. No, 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 I know, I know. What is oh, that? What is that? Uh, two beers. No. Closing time. Oh, and uh, live long and prosper, Mr. Spock. <laughs> what does the minister say to you? you know? oh, adultery is a sin. <laughs> he does. Uh, remember about a month ago, yeah. the cops pulled you over. Yeah. What did they say? Hey, you can call flying your plane through a shopping mall freedom of expression, but around here we call that disturbing the peace. That's the one. <laughs> Life is like a river. It winds and ebbs and flows. It carries you along for quite a while. Then it shoots water off your nose. Life is like a river. Nothing scheduled, nothing planned. You cruise along as far as you can, and at the end, you're probably damned. <laughs> Well, with the whole lodge into a Middle Ages frame of mind, as usual, I thought I would take this week's Handyman Corner and build something that's appropriate for the age of chivalry. Remember that uh, television show, Robin Hood? Man, I love that. You know what I love the best? The way they would send messages through the woods by attaching them to an arrow and then shooting them. Thwack! 
into a tree or a peasant's back. <laughs> and I'm thinking, why don't we use that same technology to be able to send, say, packages and parcels through the woods? Sort of a courier du bois. <laughs> if that makes you Blanche, then maybe you're a Blanche du bois. <laughs> or a TV critic. <laughs> All right, first thing you're gonna need is a pole vault pole to use as your bow. Now, uh, I got this from the Possum Lake School, but uh, you can get one for free just by standing right next to the pole vault event itself, because as the guy goes over, he'll always let go of the pole, and you can just grab it there, and you'll be miles away by the time he comes to when he lands on the ground there, because the cushion got moved, you know, by somebody. <laughs> now, you're gonna need some kind of a, a bow string to go on this thing. Uh, you could use a rope or, uh, or a garden hose or anything, but I suggest uh, fan belts out of your car. Or better yet, fan belts out of your friends' cars. <laughs> sure, they're gonna be a little bit ticked when they find out that the cars are boiling over all the time, but on the other hand, vehicles don't belong in the Middle Ages anyway. Except maybe Buster's Edsel. <laughs> now we're gonna need an arrow for this whole rig. I suggest a shovel. Especially if you're gonna be sending government documents. <laughs> All right, now I know what you're thinking. How is one guy gonna be able to work this huge bow and arrow and thing all by himself? Well, that's a little surprise I've been saving for you. I'm not just building a bow. I'm building a crossbow. <laughs> Now, uh, with the boat trailer, you get the perfect angle for launching. And with her mounted on wheels here, you have the full 390-degree range for aiming. <laughs> All right, now what you do is uh, get yourself a piece of rope like that, tied to the bow line like I've done here, and then just uh, hook your winch right on there and crank her back. handle on the shovel so that she'll hook onto the bow line. I'll just pull that out of there. No, 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 I don't. <laughs> there we go. Now we got to attach something to the shovel to carry the parcels and what have you. Now you could use a lunch pail, you could use a bread box. I prefer a bed pan. It's light, it's aerodynamic, and it prepares the receiver for bad news. <laughs> no news is good news. <laughs> All right, now, I'm just gonna aim this up at the Braxton's Marina there, and, uh, cause I got this electronic ignition that I have to return, or pay for it. <laughs> All right, now, to send our package, all I have to do is cut the twine. And you know what you could do is tie a spool of thread onto the shovel there, and you can actually trace your package. <laughs> so there we have it. The Possum Lake Medieval Courier Service when it absolutely has to get there over water. Remember, women don't find you handsome, and I'm guessing they don't. They should at least find you handy. Four. Sorry. Ah. Stay tuned, you wanna be there when Ranger Gore discovers yet another phobia. Sometime soon, you guys will be out at a social function when right out of the blue, one or two younger women will start flirting with you. They'll pat you on your bald head, <laughs> laugh at your corny jokes, maybe playfully sit in your lap, or get you out in the dance floor for a turn or two. Make you feel alive, make you feel like a pistol again. <laughs> well, congratulations, you are now officially an old geezer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, I'm talking to you. Oh, yeah, that's the first sign of it right there. Those women are only fawning you because they think it's kind of cute to see someone your age doing the frug. <laughs> I mean, think of who else was there that night, eh? Bunch of young guys with testosterone in their eyes, only one thing on their mind. Whereas you are old and fun and safe. <laughs> but you know, it's not, it's not that bad being an old geezer, eh? Did you have fun? Sure you did. Did you enjoy being the center of attention? Sure you did. And today, while you're rubbing the liniment into your sore joints, you've still got the memory, and as long as you got the memory, remember, I'm pulling for you, because we're all in this together, you old geezer. <laughs> well, on behalf of our viewers and mankind in general, what the heck are you doing here, Ranger Gore? <laughs> this, 
Well, Red, here's my idea. After a rain, the fire danger is low, right? Yes. So I'm building a sprinkler system for the forest. Oh. Uh, sprinkler system in the forest. Okay. Yeah. That's right. I mean, it's mandatory in most buildings, so why shouldn't it be in the forest, right? I mean, I'm drilling out these old branches to use as pipes to carry the water along, and I'm using these pine cones to use as sprinklers. <laughs> Or did you ever think that maybe there's a time limit, you know, on how long a person should be a forest ranger? No. No, no way. Not for me, Red, because as Smokey the Bear once said, only you can prevent forest fires. In fact, he said that to me personally one day, and I remember the day like it was yesterday. I was downstairs in the basement in the rec room, and I turned on my 26-inch Admiral, and there was Smokey the Bear looking at me straight in the eye and said, only you can prevent forest fires. And I said, yes, sir. <laughs> you know, it might have been a bit of a burden to lay on a nine-year-old, especially since I didn't want to prevent forest fires. Really, I, I wanted to study medicine. But when a bear looks at you straight in the eye and sends a personal message to you, you better darn well listen. Uh, Gordon, I think that's more of a slogan, actually. Sorry, what? Well, a slogan. I mean, smoking the bear said only you can prevent forest fires in every commercial he ever did. You know, it's just it was a thing he did, you know. It was a shtick. So it wasn't just a personal message to me? Then? Oh, gosh, no, no, no. What? No, what? What? All right. What? Could have studied medicine. <laughs> yeah, uh, Yeah, all right. Uh, oh, you know, go ahead, you know, Gord, Gord, wait a minute, wait a minute. Come on back, come on back, come on back. I'm just thinking here, you know, think about it this way. You're saving a lot more lives as a forest ranger than you ever would have as a doctor. But I haven't saved a single life here. Yeah, but you're still ahead. <laughs> yeah. Golly, this uh, medieval day is turning into the most educational event we've ever had at Possum Lodge, which isn't all that hard, actually. So where's your suit of armor? Oh, no, the paint's just drying, Harold. Boy, those hockey pads really soak up the primer, I'll tell you that. I hope the horses don't get hurt. Oh, no, we're not using real horses, Harold. We bolted a couple of pummel horses to K-cars. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose that, uh, you know, no ordinary horses were good enough for the Knights of the Round Table. We need a little more, a little more horsepower than that, you know. And the wives apparently are doing up a groaning board, but nobody knows what that is. Oh, yeah, 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 I know. Oh, a groaning board. Oh, yeah, it's a groaning board. Sure, I know. Yeah, a groaning board. It's, it's, a, it's a, a board, and it, and it groans. And, it's, and you got a, you got a groaning, and you got bored. It's a, it's a groaning board. As I say, nobody knows what that is. <laughs> but uh, we're all excited about it. I figure anything that uh, uses food and involves the word groaning sounds pretty good to me. You know, it's, it's amazing. I never thought history could be this exciting. I thought history was just a bunch of dead people. Well, it's early yet. <laughs> you know, Ranger Gord, uh, you living, eating, and sleeping up here in the tower for 16 years. You ever suffer from acrophobia at all? What, what's that, right? A oh, fear of heights. Heights? Yeah. Oh, no. I'm not really that high here. What's the matter? Oh. You all right? <laughs> what, you all right? Help me. What's the matter? It's too high. No, no. <laughs> We're only two to three hundred no. feet. No, it's nothing. I'm, I'm too high. What? I'm too high. No, no, you're fine. I'm too high. That's fine. I'm fine. What? I'm too high. What? What's the matter? I'm too high. No, you're not. You're embarrassed. We're on television, Gord. What? We're on television here. Oh. Well, you're all right. You're crying on my shoe. Yeah. All right, that's fine. <laughs> you know, when you look back into the medieval history and so on, uh, there's a lot of tradition, a lot of pomp, circumstance, and so on, and that's what we wanted to recreate. And the... this is a normal way of starting, apparently, of starting a... Boy, that would get on your nerves, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> that's my way of throwing down the gauntlet. And what this does is sets up a uh, sword fight or some sort of a duel of some kind. Now, we have the fencing, fencing stuff. We used to do a lot more fencing up at the lodge before the police crack down. But uh, you get the mask on there. That's actually me behind there. See, it makes that little noise when you hit a guy, so you're not really going to hurt him. These are sort of practicing. I put my hat on there so I'd know who I was in case I got lost. <laughs> and Bill's got a little weeding here on his there, too, and uh, pops hat on. And he uh, actually got the prescription screen on that. Didn't want to strain his eyes, I guess. Oh, I'm out of your corner, and do si do no. Oh, that is a bit frightening, isn't it? But now we get into the majesty of it all. Well, sort of, okay, all right. So you got to really hold on to the sword with that. Uh, you know, it's a good one on Bill. Oh. Oh, it's kind of a good one on me, I guess. Oh, well. i got three other wheels. No, don't you worry about it, Bill. There you go. And back to the sword fight. 
You walk through the front door and you hear those words that makes your blood run cold. We need to talk. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, first off, men shoot the breeze, men chew the fat, men don't talk, right? Yeah. And when she gets you to talk, she wants you to do something else men don't do. Share your feelings. Ooh. Problem here is men only have three emotions. Mild anxiety, full-blown panic. I may have miscounted. <laughs> no, 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 there's the other one when you're driving. Primal rage? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, whereas compared to men, women have a huge range of emotions with the subtle gradations and smooth transitions of an FM radio dial. Yeah, you see, if emotions were colors, a woman's emotions would look like that wall of paint chips at the hardware store yeah. with names like Misty River Green and Silver Brumby Beige. Whereas men are stuck with Rust-Oleum Red and Safety Yellow. <laughs> That's why we're always painting ourselves into a corner. So, here's what you do. Don't talk. Just listen. But listen smart. Clamp down on the inside of your mouth with your teeth. <laughs> It'll give you a real soulful look. And maybe bring tears to your eyes, which you can dab away with your manly fist. Score big points there, I'll tell oh, you. Yeah. So if you're swimming in a deep well of emotional riches. <laughs> Whereas actually you're wading in the shallow end of clueless wonderment. <laughs> so remember, bide your time. And bite your tongue. Welcome to the expert portion of the show. On this week's expert portion of the show, we have two excellent experts, my Uncle Rad Green and his best friend, Mr. Edgar Montrose. Okay. This letter goes as follows, and it's from a viewer in Madison, Wisconsin. <laughs> Dear experts, I am restoring a 1963 Rambler, and about 2 a.m. last night, I went into the house for a clean bandage, and I found a note. It's from my wife, and she was saying that she was leaving me. All of her clothes were gone, and I think she took most of the furniture. <laughs> Is she kidding or what? <laughs> Sign confused. Well, thanks for writing confused, rather than, you know, showing up in person. <laughs> okay, now, the hardest thing about these situations is getting rid of the stove. <laughs> The, the, this gentleman here, he's, he's, uh, he's got a rambler. His wife is gone, Harold, and once a man starts cooking his own meals, the next thing you know, he thinks he can live without women. 
And that way lies madness. <laughs> now, believe me, I'm not just guessing about this. You gotta get rid of the stove. Not that easy to do, Edgar, you know. The environmentalists won't let you just throw them into the lake anymore. <laughs> You know what I would do? I'd put her up on top of the van, go for a drive. Whatever happens, happens. Parts per million, that's a secret. You gotta lower the parts per million. Reduce the density. Break that baby down into tiny little pieces so it can be absorbed by the earth. Put a triple charge of number seven dynamite in the oven drawer and kaboom! You know, that would be kind of fun to watch, I would think. <laughs> Sounds incredibly dangerous. Exactly. Well, just make sure you don't have a magnet in your pocket or you'll wind up with 200 pounds of iron filings in your shorts. <laughs> Again. Blow up the stove and romance comes back into your life. <laughs> Quite possibly the stupidest advice I've ever heard. <laughs> Well, of course it is, Harold. We're just killing time here. Well, that's for sure. Anyone who's restoring a rambler's beyond help anyway. <laughs> well, who would have thought? Two guys in homemade armor carrying sharpened wooden lances heading at each other on a couple of pommel horses bolted to K cars would be dangerous. <laughs> I guess it was kind of a rough being a knight of the round table. Of course, back in those days, they didn't have to worry about a tie rod breaking. <laughs> there was cars swerving everywhere. When Sticky Peterson's monk robes got stuck in that bumper, he went from being Friar Tuck to Lady Godiva. <laughs> yeah, you know, it really made us appreciate the things we have today. Ambulances, stretchers, x-ray machines. <laughs> I guess call the possum meeting time on yeah, you, you go ahead, Harold. I'll be down. I want to get this armor off and get metal fatigue here. <laughs> so if my wife is watching, I'm no longer King Red. I've renounced my throne. I'm going back to being a surf and surf up. <laughs> so the rest, yeah. Thanks so much for watching. On behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge. Keep your stick on the ice. <laughs> Oh, yeah.